Okay, I've already gone to the link. I've already downloaded the files. If you click on the file, it will open Carco automatically and bring in Morgan's design. And as you can see, it is definitely on the diagonal here. So what we're going to do is go over here to tool paths, click on tool paths. He's got a bunch in here. We're going to get rid of them because I am going to do this differently because we're going to twist this thing down. We can't have those tool paths. They just won't work. So we're going to go along and we're going to delete all the tool paths. Don't panic. I know how to bring them back. All right, all tool paths are gone. Now there's a double vector here going around this thing. I'm not exactly sure why that's there, but we're going to get rid of that too. Zooming in, clicking on the outside vector, we're going to delete that. It's actually a doubled up vector, it looks like. Delete it again. And there, it's gone. Now, obviously, we don't have a big enough space here, so go to Model, Add Border. <clears throat> let's add, oh, let's add uh, six inches to this thing all the way around. That should be enough. We can delete the square that's surrounding the object. Now, I'm not going to put in the beer opener, and everything else looks like it can stay. So we'll light up everything. And then we're going to go to Transform Tool over here on the left. We're going to go back over here on the right. We're going to rotate this clockwise 45 degrees, which puts it the way we need it. And we're going to make sure, okay, we've got the origin in the bottom left corner. We don't want that. Let's click off of there. Let's go to Model, Set Position, Center Pixel. Click OK. We now have the origin in the center so that we can produce the tool paths, and etc. Now, if you use different size lumber than what Morgan uses, you're going to have to adjust these slots. You're going to have to know what size the magnet you're using is and what size the dowel you're using is. I'll use the same size lumber. It should be an inch and a quarter. Thickness, that is. So let's check these openings and make sure that they're the right size. Now to do this, we're going to have to ungroup these. So click on them, left click, wait for the fly out menu and click ungroup. And as you can see, now they're individual vectors. Now we can click on this slot, go to the transform tool and check its size over here. 1.24874 is close enough, but let's make it 1.25. We want to maintain the aspect ratio so that this width and height remains consistent and we should be good to go. Now it's just a matter of making normal vectors, normal tool paths and cut this thing out. So we would do a profile tool path around the outside, we would do a pocket tool path on this guy, this guy and this guy. These would be pockets as well based on how thick your magnets are and I would go half the distance in your stock with the depth of cut on those two dowel openings. One more thing, I would regroup these three back together. It just makes it more convenient when you're clicking on things and when you're making the tool paths. So I'll go ahead and make these tool paths. You've seen that a bunch of times before. And we'll go out to the shop that is the shop and we'll cut this thing out and see what we get. When Morgan made his chairs, he put a name down the center of them. He put a beer opener on the back of them. And I thought, I don't need the beer opener, but how can I make them fancy? So I put them together with a cedar strip down the middle, laminated them together. And I was trying to do this without the dust collection on, but it absolutely drives me crazy having this dust going everywhere. So back to the dust collector we go. Here we're cutting the profile. And as you can see right there, I just missed my pipe for a fence. So Luckily, you can remove them like this while you're carving if you have that issue. It's one of the reasons why I like the PVC pipes. Here we cut the dowel hole. As you can see, it doesn't go all the way through. This is the seat. We're cutting loose. Again, on the end of it, on the far left, I almost ran into a pipe there. You're going to use a router, hand router, and round over all the corners. Those are slots to carry the thing with, obviously. Once you get this all done, you have a ton of sanding to do because you want it smooth. You don't want to get any slivers in your keister. So make sure it's nice and smooth. 
and let's see if this thing fits. Make sure you don't put the dowel pins in the seat or you won't be able to put the thing together. And there you have it. Putting the magnets in, couldn't get the paper off. We're going to put the dowel in obviously right here and we're going to use black walnut. We're going to use this dowel maker to make them. Don't trust the big box stores when you buy dowels and they're not the right size. Make your own, sand them so they fit perfectly when you're done. The reason I'm moving that thing over like that is because the dowel's running into the post. A little glue in the bottom to hold it in. Slide in the dowel. And those are locator pins so that when you put the thing together, it lo locates better. Now here's a trick for you. Using that block to hold that tool flat as I trim off the 